<sighs> you know, it was a nice 48 hours of positive thinking and hype towards uh, 2K24. Now, obviously, I reported on it a day late, the sterling reporter that I am. Every time I think about being like a reporter for 2K, I just want to put on like a bowler hat with like a piece of paper sticking out and a cigarette and then just have a little notepad and jotting down. I always wanted to be like an old timey reporter, even though they were scum, but I always wanted to be one. I don't know why. That or like Sherlock Holmes. I don't know. Either of those would have been pretty cool, to be honest. Sherlock Holmes just like smoked opium all day and like solved mysteries. I don't know. If you want to say that doesn't sound fun, you're a liar, but the goodwill towards 2k24 was very short-lived now they started out today we're going to talk about it all okay they started out today with something that was another positive uh sentiment right cool um essentially they came out with the seasonal progression track will now combine my career uh so park and my team right so if you play nothing but my team you're still going to level up in park at the same rate that you were going to level up for my team now that was a positive thing that had positive reception because I'm not a my career guy. Um, I typically don't play park except to spin the little wheel. And I used to play some frisbee golf back in 2K20, but that's about it. I know, shocker that I would play digital frisbee golf or frisbee golf at all. I know, but uh, yeah, that's basically the only time I ever really got on park. I think I played some in like 2K15, maybe 2K16 or something here and there, but never been a park guy. But this was something that I was kind of excited about because I was like, all right, man, if I can go out there and just like I can get some benefits. And maybe I'll go play park a little bit. Maybe. I'm not going to spend a bunch of money on it, but maybe I'll go hoop with the homies in my brown shirt. You know, maybe. And that was followed by a pretty good, yeah, critical reception from, like, the overall fan base. Now, that was, like I said, extremely short-lived because then 2K came out with this. Oh, boy. Introducing two premium season pass options to 2K24 seasons. The Pro Pass and Hall of Fame Pass provides players with access to 40 additional earnable premium rewards and more. That's 40 per pass, by the way. So, now you may be thinking to yourself, what the hell does this mean? What does that mean? Well, let me put it into very, very simple terms. Very simple terms is 2K added a paid battle pass, a la call of duty or fortnite or something of that nature usually free to play experiences that have these typically not full priced uh, yearly sports titles that are rated e for everyone but whatever um they added that to the 2k experience so another part of your brain might be thinking why is that a bad thing well the game costs 70 dollars already and they already aggressively monetize it throughout the entire experience no matter what you're playing and now they're asking you to give them more money for something that was already free for the last two years on top of that. Okay, so they had to put out a whole fact here, a season pass explainer to kind of explain how this works. Because once again, just like everything 2K related, when they try to introduce something new, they don't explain it properly. And it's also uh, hella confusing and it's confusing on purpose. So you spend money without thinking about it. So let's break it down here, shall we? standard level 40 grind that we've seen in my team for the past three years and park for the last two that's still going to be there in pretty much the exact same way you remember it um they are changing the xp system so it's more just like a play game get xp type situation um very similar to how like mt is ranked up at the end of the games i wouldn't be shocked if they just got rid of earning mt completely and it's just xp at this point by the way i just want to point that out there's no like confirmation of that i just wouldn't be shocked like really at all so the standard level 40 is still there um, in the same way you get that for free no matter what but then they've introduced two different battle pass situations here yes so it's a little confusing on how it actually works here right um basically there's the pro which is a ten dollar one this gets you the standard 40 for my career the standard 40 for my team and then 40 additional premium rewards now I'm a little unsure of what that means from the standpoint of if you play my team, are they my team centric rewards? If you play my career, are they my career centric rewards? Because at that point, like it's not necessarily worth it either way if they're not geared towards like one gameplay or one game mode, I should say. So it's a little confusing for sure. Uh, the one thing that you need to understand right off the bat, though, is that the stuff you get for paying money 
is undoubtedly going to be better than the stuff you get for free by such a degree it's going to be entirely frustrating like you know that so then there's the hall of fame which is twenty dollars and this is every six weeks you'll have to pay this so that's that's great um in addition to that with the pro you also get two uh rewards per game mode automatically just for paying the ten dollars um and then for the twenty dollar one you get an additional reward it just doesn't specify what it is um or what it's for ha <sighs> so that's a thing so basically to put it simply if you try to play for free you get 40 your standard level 40 for both modes and then if you if you pay you get an additional 40 levels worth of rewards. Like I said, if you're completely on the my team side and you barely ever touch park, I'm not sure what's going on with that exactly, but it's going to be interesting to see. Now, let's talk about why this is awful for a second. It should be so obvious why this sucks. Now, it's not quite going to be as like overpowered as people are thinking, at least initially, until 2K realized the sales are down. Then they're going to ratchet it up so more people buy it. So it will get to that pay to win horrible level that we know it's going to at some point. But why this sucks is when you really sit there and think about 2K, not only is it a full priced gaming experience, you know, if they were charging, uh, well, A, if it was free, that would be one thing. But if they were charging 30 or $35 for it, the way that 2K actually used to charge that, um, they used to be half the price of EA's sports titles back in the day, if you remember back in like uh, 2004 to like 2008. Um, right when NBA Live started to really fall off, right? I don't think I would have quite as much to say about this, even though at the end of the day, they are milking more money than a standard game release, but it's just the audacity to do this on top of a $70 price tag, right? It's just, it's, it's awful, okay? And then you're taking something that was already free and now you're just charging for it, right? You're trying to say that you're bringing more to the game, but really you're just taking something that was free and charging for it. Because really what they're gonna do is they're gonna lower uh the value and effectiveness of the stuff that would be under their the kind of standard level 40 umbrella they're just going to make that stuff weaker and then take all the stuff that would be there um like the good stuff that would be there and just put it in the paid uh pass so yeah there's that but then you kind of look at the fact that last year they doubled the price to max out a build in park which everyone was understandably upset about um vc prices have gone up Obviously, the game's price has gone up. It's now you know more expensive than it has been in the past just to purchase the game in the first place. And then my team aggressively monetized the game mode to a bad degree, right? Where they... Granted, packs are bad. I'm going to say that right now, and I've talked about this a bunch of times. Packs are the worst, right? They are. But the $50 price tag to buy the best player in each set is not good either. It is better, yes, but bad still and then you have that which they're going to do that all year next year and the price isn't coming down price of the bricks going up like it's not coming down at all it might even go up a little bit then they're just stacking this on top of you so to just play 2k it costs hundreds of dollars <laughs> per year like people have done the math and roughly it's about 380 dollars total to have the best chance at success and that's not counting like opening my team packs and getting players that's just talking buying the game buying the hall of fame battle pass and maxing out a build right that's going to run you about 380 that's not even getting into my team or anything like that right i've never in my life seen a game this horribly monetized like 2K may legitimately be the most aggressively monetized video game in the history of video gaming, and I mean that. I mean that truly. You can make a case for maybe like a FIFA or, you know, an EA product for sure is going to be up there, but the way 2K has operated the microtransactions over the past three years is definitely immoral. Um, definitely not illegal because we're in the U.S., but like uh, immoral for sure and uh, scummy, and I wish them all kind of the... Anyone who made these decisions and put these in place, I kind of wish them the worst because I know for an absolute fact, none of this is necessary. Now, when I say that, I mean, sometimes, uh, specifically with like indie studios and things like that, people are willing to overlook monetization, um, even if it's slightly predatory, because they're like, you know what? This is a small studio. They're 
putting out this game. They're probably in the red for sure. So they're trying to make up that lost revenue, blah, 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 blah. You can make that case for things like, let's say, like a Metro Exodus or like Stalker or some type of like, I don't know why I picked two, <laughs> uh, you know, Eastern European centric survival games, but just kind of like something of that ilk, right? You can make the case that those monetization options are okay because the studio does need to stay afloat to keep providing content, right? And they deserve to be rewarded for working so hard and putting themselves in the red, whatever. 2K is not that, okay? 2K doesn't have to do any of this to stay up and running, okay? They are not a small indie dev. They are one of the largest game publishers in the entire world, right? Take two interactive. They absolutely do not need to do this stuff. This is a simple case of, if you understand the United States free market, right? It's constant returns. Your returns need to be higher and higher every year. And that's why we've seen the monetization for 2K and games like Grand Theft Auto get worse and worse and worse because every year they expect to be up by a certain percentage. So they have to find new ways to make sure or at least get as close to being up to that percentage as possible. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole Freakonomics uh, tangent here because I'm not an economics professor. I do my best to understand it, but at the same time, I'm not educated in the way that I would like to be to properly explain it, right? I barely went to college, okay? I smoked weed in the parking lot of college. That's my educational background. So... I, I don't think I went to econ, actually. I'm pretty sure that was like, my, I'm going to cut class. Cutting class in college is the dumbest shit of all time, by the way. It's so stupid. Like, you're paying money to go there, and you cut to, like, smoke weed in a in a car. It's just, god damn, dude. So stupid. Anyways, my main point is they don't need to do this stuff. They're doing this stuff specifically to get percentage points um, and try to basically get... I mean, CEO's bonuses, essentially. I mean, that's, like, what's going on here. This is horrible. Like, this is the worst-case scenario for 2K. And if you think, because I've seen a lot of people say this, like, well, I mean, if they're going to do this, that means they're going to slow down on some of the other monetization. I think things are going to be cheaper, et cetera, et cetera. No, they're not. Nothing is going to be cheaper. I promise, man. There is absolutely no part of this game that's going to be cheaper than it already is right now. Uh, guaranteed players are still going to be $50 at the highest tier. The cost of a build is going to be the same. The cost of clothing is going to be the same. VC costs across the board have already been confirmed to be the same. And you notice, point number two, it doesn't say that you can purchase it with VC. It says $9.99 or $20. Why am I bringing that up? Because there was a lot of, uh, what I would say, false hope. People saying like, oh, well, maybe it's just like every other battle pass where you buy it once, but then you earn enough of the currency or earn enough of whatever to buy it again. Something I've done with PUBG countless times. I bought it one time and then I played it enough to earn the next battle pass, rinse and repeat, etc. I do not believe that is going to be the case for 2K. Um, maybe I'm wrong about that, but I don't ever see 2K doing anything like that because why would they? They have a product that only they have, right? This is a thing that keeps a lot of these game studios in check when it comes to some of these other uh, battle pass adjacent games um, or aggressively monetized games in general is at any time, another game could come out that's similar enough and it'll take players away and it'll take money away. So it has to kind of keep them in check. Even something as like globally large as Call of Duty it can lose players relatively easy to another shooter, right? That's just how it is. That's it's just facts, like it is. Even Fortnite, there's nothing that's really quite like Fortnite um, from like a stylistic standpoint, but like if another Battle Royale comes out and people are getting tired of like Fortnite shit, they could just go play the other Battle Royale. They probably won't, but they could in theory. 2K doesn't have to worry about that. There is no other basketball game. There cannot be another basketball game. We are, I would say, at minimum, even if they started working on it last year, probably three years away from another basketball game coming out, and the likely person, or publisher, I should say, that's going to drop that is EA, so it's not like it's going to make our lives a whole lot easier, right? This is horrible. Um, I haven't even touched on another thing that... Oh, God. 
Uh, you're also able to purchase level skips for $2. So they're essentially just saying like, yeah, if you don't want to actually grind level 40, you can pay $2 to just skip levels. This should tell you right here, the fact that they added this into the game, that these are going to be overpowered. Like these premium 40 additional levels worth of content are going to be completely overpowered if they're not only selling you a 10 and a $20 battle pass, they're also selling you the ability to skip levels for $2. That means there is going to be crack on here for both my career and my team players. Now, is this doom and gloom completely? Uh, no. If you're a park player, honestly, at the end of the day, depending on how they handle it, it may not be that big of a deal for you. Um, if it's mostly like from a, my career perspective, like maybe some light boosts here and there, but for the most part, it's just like cosmetic items and stuff of that nature because they did come out and say like, like legend is back, like reps back or whatever. Then at the end of the day, it may not be that big of a deal for you. It's probably not going to be as doom and gloom uh, as it will be for anyone who plays my team. Because like I said, unless they're throwing some absolutely crazy boosts in there or like badges or something of that nature, it's really not going to matter. I mean, it's just going to be people who want it for cosmetic reasons, right? Now, now, my team, on the other hand, is much different because we know how my team is operated and we know for an absolute fact that nothing free in this game is ever even remotely close to as good as the paid alternative. So that means the level 40 reward is not going to be anywhere near as good. And I'm talking about the free level 40 reward as the premium one. So it is very doom and gloom for your my team players. I can say that with the utmost certainty, right? It is going to make this game such a pay to win experience with the viable players, which like I said, better than pack, still not good. And this, this is going to be a whole thing. Now, the only thing that gives me even a modicum of hope is just the fact that they haven't really specified the premium rewards. Now, if it's 40 premium rewards that are both my career and my team, yeah, I mean, it's going to be, it's GG's. Like, you're going to have to spend money on this game, but you're going to have no chance, realistically. But maybe it's mostly my career. I just feel like it's probably not. I don't know, dude. This game is exhausting. Like, it really is, man. Like, being a fan... I'm not even going to say I'm not a fan of 2K. I need to specify that. Like, I, I'm not. I never have been. I'm a fan of basketball video games. So, realistically, anyone could come out with a basketball video game, and I would play it over 2K. I think that needs to be understood because I think people like to take that, bro, go play something else. Just play something else argument. Well, like, dude, we don't have any other basketball games. Like, yeah, I could probably get a ROM for, like, NBA Live... 2005 and maybe go play that for a little bit but that's like my only option or i can go play nba live 19 for a little bit and like these are the two options that i have i can't play anything else man this is all i got and 2k knows that that's why they're able to just aggressively monetize the game and just you know at a certain point, it's exhausting talking about 2K. It really is. They're an exhausting company to talk about because it's just, they're so, the monetization practices that they participate in are so evil, man. They really are. Like, I know it sounds like I'm being dramatic uh, because it's just a video game that's trying to charge more money. So, I mean, it's not necessarily the textbook definition of, like, evil. It's not like they're snidely whiplash, like, curling their mustache in the corner or, like, trying to tie you to some railroad tracks. But, like, it is, man. If you look at the rest of the gaming landscape, the stuff that they do in this game is evil, man. It, it is. Comparatively, yeah, it's the worst monetization in the industry right now. The fact of the matter is, my hope is in like 10 to 15 years in economics classes and in general. Um, hopefully there's a big lawsuit that just stops all this from happening because it's so bad. But I'm hoping that in like 10, 15 years, maybe I'll have a child and they'll go to school and they'll come back home with like their history textbook or like their econ textbook and be like, hey, dad, check it out. Do you remember this? Like, do you remember when this happened, when 2K was like doing this really terrible stuff, when this video game, NBA 2K, that hopefully doesn't exist anymore, was doing this like horrible monetization like do you remember this and i'm gonna be like you know what it's time for a history lesson i'm gonna pop open the old videos and i'm gonna talk all about it this is an ideal life while i smoke a corn cob bite 
Not really likely to happen, but possible. Now, before I end this video, you may think I'm, like, overreacting about this, but... No, nah, this is pretty much the worst case scenario. They've monetized pretty much every aspect of the game at this point. This was kind of the last free thing that they had. Pretty much all we got left is like challenges and domination if it still exists. And other than that, I mean, it costs so much just to play this game. Because you also got to think you have to buy an online membership as well. So nothing in this game is technically free, which is... It's messed up man the last thing we have are the challenges that's like the last thing that's like not monetized and i guarantee they start to put ads in those at some point so with that being said have a good day you guys uh i hate it here